desires and up. You can't wait. When Esau came, all he needed was to wait. But he felt that the hunger he had at that particular time could not wait. He wanted whatever he wanted by fire, by thunder. He wanted it now, 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 now. now. Watch certain desires you carry. Watch certain appetites you carry. They may be roots by which the enemy uses to exchange your destiny. Esau came. Those of you who are normally desperate and in your desperation you say whichever man shall come I will marry. Came to speak to you. You, you, you are so desperate you begin to settle for anything. Esau could not see the value, the value of the birthright. The birthright is a serious thing in the Bible, the birthright. It is the, because the birthright meant that, for example, he was the firstborn. And the firstborn in scripture is entitled to three things. One, he's entitled to the double portion. Two, the legacy and genealogy is passed through. And then three, the priesthood. This is why those of you who heard me talk about Reuben, do you know that Reuben was, was the tribe that was supposed to carry the priesthood of Israel? But because he could not change, he lost all three. He lost the double portion to Joseph. He lost the priesthood <coughs> the priesthood to Levi and he lost the lineage to Judah there are things you can silently lo lose because you don't understand their value father may we never exchange our birthright for anything I will not settle for soup over a birthright in the name of Jesus Then we look at the Abraham factor and Sarah in Genesis 16. Lack of patience. You must, you must watch it in your life when you do not have patience. Patience is a fruit of the Spirit. God promised Abraham, I'll give you a child. This child is not a normal child. He's a legacy carrier. He is the one through whom God should begin other things. But because there was lack of patience, they introduced Hagar who introduced Ishmael. I pray today, Ishmael is not your portion. Even when Ishmael came, God said, no, I did not say Ishmael. I said Isaac. Uh, I know Ishmael resembles Abraham, but it is not Ishmael, it is Isaac. Today, don't settle for any Ishmael blessing. Don't settle for any Ishmael position. God said, I will bless you. I will give you a son, no matter how old, no matter how long. Don't settle for Ishmael. This is why in Genesis 22, Ishmael is there, but God comes to Abraham and says, get your son, your only son. Ishmael is there, but God doesn't recognize Ishmael. He says, I only know Isaac. Isaac was not the only son. Ishmael is there, but God says, get your son, your only son, Isaac. You must never settle for Ishmael. Some of you, you are happy. You are clapping. No, not quite a man. Ishmael. You are there, the blessing, the Ishmael blessing. You are happy. I came to, 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 to change your focus. Don't settle for Ishmael. So, watch your lack of patience. Faith and patience, they are Queens in the Bible. The Bible says in Hebrews, by faith and patience, Abraham inherited the promises of God. Thank you for saying amen. 
you will not settle for Ishmael. I said Ishmael is not your, your portion. And as you can see, Ishmael is a challenge. Ishmael is a problem. Ishmael is a problem if you introduce him. From the time Ishmael was conceived, when, the moment Ishmael was conceived, Sarah started quarreling with Hagar. Ishmael is a problem. You get a job and then that same job, you and your wife who used to love each other so dearly, now you are quarreling. Thank you for saying amen. amen. Oh God, give us a car. Give us a car. It comes. Yes, the car comes. The same car begins to produce quarrels. Who drives it? When they drive? How they come when they drive? Everything now starts. Ishmael blessings. I know Isuma. <laughs> I know it's a nice car. But the same Ishmael is, is, is causing some things. Thank you for saying amen. That's the, I came to prophesy to someone. Because the difference is when Isaac comes, there is laughter. I said when Isaac comes, there is laughter. Ishmael brings strife. Isaac brings laughter. Where there is laughter, there is celebration. Where there is laughter, there is joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. When Isaac comes, your marriage becomes stronger. Your career becomes stable. Everything, uh -huh, don't settle for Ishmael. Am I preaching to somebody? Yeah. Ishmael, if you are a foreigner, don't settle for something that looks alike. Ishmael is Abraham's son. Something that looks like. Am I preaching to somebody? Let's look at the Eve factor. The Eve factors. These are things the enemy puts inside of you. Lack of contentment. Lack of contentment. The enemy comes to Eve and says, Did God really say? If he would to wing and the enemy is highlighting this one tree, did God say? Then he says, God knows, the enemy says, God knows that the moment you, you partake of this, you will become like him. Why couldn't they be content with what they were? There must be contentment. Godliness with contentment is great gain. You must be content at some level and understand that you have what other people pray for for 40 days. The blessing should not confuse you. There must be self-control when you are blessed. You must contain yourself. That's why Paul in saying this, he said I know how to live both in plenty and in abundance. He says when I don't have, I know how to live. When I have plenty, I know how to live. Then he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So even when I have, I, I cultivate a contentment. Can you imagine? If had the entire garden everything at their disposal and the devil says God knows that you will become like him we must look out when the enemy brings this thing in our hearts where we are not content some of us let me say you should be content with the spiritual home where God has blessed you you should be happy with your spiritual home. You should be content with where God has placed you because that is the place ordained to raise you. That is the place that has been preserving you. Some of you, you would have run mad had it not been the prayers being made here. You should be content. At least be content we are here together. Your uncle from Nigeria. Okay, Narika. 
Number four, the Haman factor. Beware of the Haman factor. Misplaced humility. I have seen pride that manifests through humility. You are so humble that the humbleness is actually pride. I said, no, me, I don't do this. I don't. You, 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 you are so humble that the very thing you call humility, that is the greatest expression of pride. And it was experienced between Haman and Mordecai. Mordecai should have not taken a certain position. Mordecai is powerful. Mordecai is a queen maker. Mordecai is not an ordinary cousin to Hadassah. Mordecai is a queen maker. She, he knows how to give prophetic and spiritual advice. Mordecai is a late. Mordecai is the one who can hear evil conspiracies and expose them to the king. Mordecai. Mordecai is powerful, but he takes up a false humility and he's there at the gate. Why didn't he follow Esther? He had already made the queen. She, he should have taken the place of Haman. Sometimes your false humility is what introduces Haman in the system. I am speaking to somebody. Your false humility is what has created room for Haman. And when Haman comes, he's not looking for any other. He's looking for Mordecai. He stands before Mordecai. He wants a, a queen maker, a man who spiritually sends him to bow. Mordecai says, I'm not bowing to you. But Mordecai was carrying a misplaced humility. He should have risen to cover the queen he had made. He should have risen to cover the queen he had made. This is why at some point God had to intervene and may God intervene. God had to intervene. The king started having sleepless nights. He began to have, said we need to correct this error. We cannot have the other person taking a position of the other. And when they open up the books and say, what has been done to this man? I said nothing. And he was also he was content with nothing. Let me say, I've also learned pastoring where I'm pastoring. You know, being poor is not humble. Chivi. Chintu chivi sana. Second kunguru, I hate poverty. I, I don't like demons, but poverty, I hate it. It is a robber. It is a stripper. Even right now, if I wanted pizza because of poverty, Nambo Kuriembarala, come on, come on, you people. Poverty, poverty is bad. This is the wisdom of God. He, he, he goes to Haman, the same person holding the position of Mordecai. Say, what can you do for this person? And he thinks it is him. And he's celebrating. Yeah, and you do that, I'll take him around. I said, aha. Uh -huh. Go and do it for Mordecai. Now look at Mordecai. Mordecai has this false humility. Humble, you come. And, and, uh, just look at your neighbor, just the way they are looking right now. They, are, they look as if they don't need powder. They don't need, they don't need anything. They just, they just say, no, me and the prayers. I'm just okay. Don't worry. Uh, you know, you know, if you left your twelve, if you're family, you know. They just look like that. It had to take God to reverse this error. And then now we find a Haman giving the due respect that the delayed respect to Mordecai. And after that, Mordecai takes the role. You know, let me talk about Mordecai a bit. Mordecai should have really risen with Esther. And he's sending a fiamma warning, Kurumwa and Umaiche. And that man was not helpful at some time. Esther is fearful. Things are rising. And then he, he just says, I said, you who's there, you don't think this thing will bypass you. Aletinyo Umaiche Mupalasi. He 
should have been nearer her. Warning, I said, I, I told you, you will see. There, you will see. You will see. Do you know when there was a restoration, when Mordecai, you need to read the book of Esther, when Mordecai rose and took his rightful position, he's the one who reinforced what Queen Esther was doing. And as a result, the enemy could not prevail. You know, it's amazing. Gifted people, they have this false humility. No, I'll sing next week. No, I'll usher next week. Then Haman comes and is affecting the destiny of this ministry. May you never be replaced by Haman. May we never accept any Haman in this ministry. Instead, and deny it properly, huh? <laughs> okay, let me move quickly. I just finish this. Believe me, Mordecai's attitude was misplaced. He could have even caused Esther to fail in her assignment because he was not covering her well. And Haman could have annihilated the Jews because Mordecai could not take her position. You know, some of, this, some of these things in our life, sit down with yourself and say, I will not be replaced by anyone or anything. Anyhow. In the minute. Don't be replaced. Jesus one time told them, I said, you are stopping these people from singing the stones. Repressing me. A stone when I have a mouth. I refuse to be replaced by a stone. I can you imagine? In Psalm, the Bible says the trees clap for God, the birds sing. Me, I'm quiet. No, 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 no. My worship is valuable, and I will worship Him. Don't allow Haman to take your place. We should never introduce Haman by absconding with false humility. False humility. The Ziba factor. False relationship. Ziba factor. Ziba was Mephibosheth's servant. And we know the story of Mephibosheth. He was crippled. And Ziba is assigned to take care of Mephibosheth. To look after him and every other thing. And he is sent in 1 Samuel 16 verse 1. He is sent to go and meet the king. He is equipped with everything that is needed to meet the king. When he meets the king, he begins to speak more about himself than the person he represents. And as a result, the king transfers the inheritance of Mephibosheth to Ziba. May, may we uproot the Ziba in our lives. Do you know there are certain people when they come in your life, some of you are wondering why you are not getting married. The moment that friend of yours came, your boyfriend started looking at her and stopped. See the finger. There are certain people when they walked in your marriage, they put attention, the, the, the concentration of your spouse, Ziba. Ziba. Ziba is very close and is saving. Ziba had access to the wealth of Mephibosheth and knew Mephibosheth's crippledness. He knew Mephibosheth would not come to this moment and defend himself. And he talks more about himself. May we uproot the Ziba spirit. The Ziba spirit. Even those of us who serve in this ministry, we must never become Zibas. Yeah. <laughs> 
we, we, we must give respect where it is due. Apostle is the spiritual father. And even when I stand here, I must be very careful not to draw attention to myself. It's a Ziba spirit. When a father is a father. I said the father is a father. Fathers know things here. Some of you, what Apostle knows about you, if we knew, would even change the way we look at you. But he knows he has not changed the way he looks at you. He knows and he prays for you. Me, if I know, I will become CNN for you. After preaching a powerful message, let's not embrace Ziba. You know, I respect being a pastor. I respect it. Yeah. Or even pastoring three people. I respect it. Later on, a spiritual father. We must never embrace the Ziba spirit. Ziba is a glory stealer, an inheritance stealer. It happened in our. In our line, in our clan, I discovered in our clan the headmanship was, was supposed to pass on in our family. My great grandmother got a servant whom she kept like a daughter. And everybody believed that person was related to us and had sons. And her sons were believed to be authentic heirs to the headmanship. And they got a son and they began to fight the right way. Until somebody said, no, these people, these were just servants. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Could it be that there is Ziba in your company? Could it be that there is Ziba in the ministry? False relationship. There are men that come and they want to marry you. They glitter. I mean, they have a very thick wallet. Thank you for saying amen. amen. They, they look promising. You marry them. They become the devil incarnate in your house. The chief oppressor. They even tell you you are not going to church today. Let's be careful. Force a relationship. Hey, hey, me, I want to get married. Yeah, wait upon the Lord. Don't you think it's unfair for you to wait for a relationship for a long time and then only to get a, a ziba? After sowing all those seeds, why are ziba? After crying on the altar, why are you ziba? Again, now, instead of, we were praying for the man to marry you, now we are praying for the same man who you married, who married you. Lord, Lord, help her. Lord, give her. You move on. Praise God. Two more and we are done. The terror factor. Terror factor. Unresolved pain. Unresolved pain. I don't have time to read them. I wanted to read them, but I won't read them. Do you know that Genesis chapter 12, that blessing that Abraham is carrying is not rightfully his. It belonged to Terah. Terah had three sons, Abraham, Naha, and Haran. The Bible says Haran died in his sight. And terror was hurt. Deeply hurt. But terror, uh, Haran, before he died, had a son called Lot. And so, they began to move, God began to move them towards the promised land. But there was a town named Haran. So when Terah is moving with Abraham and Nah, they are moving, they reach a place called Haran and Terah started remembering his son, Haran. And he packed there and refused to be moved. 
This is why God calls Abraham out. Because Terah went and started living in pain. He started remembering his son who died. The blessing of Abraham is actually supposed to be the blessing of Terah. So as much as we celebrate Abraham, I'm telling you that this was an error. <laughs> the man had unresolved pain. He couldn't let go of his son. To a level where by even Abraham, after Terah dies, he's so conscious of Lot because Lot is Haran's son. So sometimes we don't even know why Abraham is carrying, carrying Lot because there was this sentimentalism around, around Haran and around Lot. And then the Bible says, and Terah died. He never achieved his destiny. But God of grace, he transfers it to Abraham. Abraham almost makes the same mistake by carrying Lot. I refuse the terror factor. Vinachitika mu 2011 nizi ba vivava. Eh nikum vija firia. Eh. Fia ini kalipa. Ah uchikai kubava na nawa na na lero uchikai kubava. You know uchikai pa chufo mwine. Terror. You know, at some point, deal with your pain. Otherwise, your pain will rob you of your destiny. And people will hate you. Can you imagine if Jesus held a grudge against the Jews? I mean, that would not be a nice thing. Why are you carrying that pain? He broke my heart, Pastor. You don't know. Broke my simple heart. <laughs> Is near the broken hearted way. <laughs> Unresolved pain. Unresolved pain. I have found it strange. Some people can't even get employment because they are hurt about their previous employment. Terror. Lastly, today, Adonijah factor. Evil conspiracies. Adonijah arises. He, he just arises from nowhere and he says, I'm, I must be king. David is too old. David Nakota Sana. He mobilizes generals. He, in fact, he mobilizes a general, I think it should be Job. He mobilizes a priest. He, he, he's properly surrounded and say, you know what? This guy is too old. I am taking over kingship. <laughs> and they even begin celebrations and sacrifices. Oh, yes. He had, he had a general, a priest, and a prophet. Back, can you imagine? An evil conspiracy backed by this. A general, a priest, and the prophet. I needed to remember the prophet who backed him up. But then another prophet arose. Praise God. Nathan arose and said, this is not correct. This is not the way this lineage is going. The kingship is supposed to go to Solomon. And so this is why I told you the prophetic has risen to correct some errors today. The prophet arose and said, we have heard there is something. Things are moving. And the prophet went and talked to Bathsheba and said, Ufai we, not if you sarapuka, not if you la 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 la. Things have started happening. Some people are beginning to make move. Let's make our move. <laughs> they are celebrating there and the prophet had to encourage Bathsheba and say, let's go. You go in the presence of the king. Tell the king, Things people here are ordaining each other. <laughs> they are ordaining each other. But they pay out to follow. Now you come up. Now you will carry a shuku. Go and tell the king when you speak. He, the prophet says, "I will back you." Just tell the king, and I will confirm it. 
But Sheba goes and says, King, didn't you say? Woman, I want. Didn't you say? I said, yes. But you know, but there are people. The king woke up as weak as he was. He woke up. And is that true? He asked the prophet. said, the prophet says, I confirm the confirmation. I confirm. This is really happening. David, as weak as he was, he sat up and says, right now, right now, bring me oil. May the oil settle your matter. He says, bring me oil. No matter how many are celebrating that, the oil will stop this other thing. He says, bring me oil right now. And they brought the oil and said, bring Solomon right now. We are going to correct this. He came on his bed. He pours oil and said, now my son, you are the next king. They were busy celebrating, not knowing that God had started something. Some of you are seated here, but your miracle has begun to happen somewhere in town, somewhere in Lusaka. The miracle has done. Your enemies are celebrating, uh, but God is anointing you here. God is touching you. God is commissioning you. <laughs> the Bible says uh, when the enemies heard uh, that the king in his weakness uh, he had risen uh, and anointed Solomon uh, Adonijah and his fellow conspirators uh, they ran away. May the Lord scatter those uh, who, are, who have been wanting to take your position. Say heavenly father no one will take my position. No one will take my place. No one will take my blessing. Uh, Say, Heavenly Father, no one will take my blessing. No one will take my blessing. In the name of Jesus, any evil exchanger, I arrest it in the name of Jesus. Any evil exchanger, I silence it in the name of Jesus. Any evil exchanger, I suppress it in the name of Jesus. Say, Heavenly Father, my destiny will not be stolen the destiny of my family will not be stolen the destiny of my career will not be stolen the destiny of my children will not be stolen say heavenly father i stop the destiny exchangers say i stop the destiny exchangers my destiny will not be stolen. My career will not be stolen. My life will not be stolen. In the name of Jesus, every destiny exchanger, hear my voice. I command you to leave my family. To leave my family. In the name of Jesus, Come on, pray right now. Refuse that evil exchange. Your destiny shall not be exchanged. Your destiny shall not exchange. Yakatarabakaya. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Adadakataya. Rikaseta. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my God. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Rakaseta Rabba. Oh, thank you, Lord. Open your hands. Things that have been wanting to replace sorrow with joy. Poverty with riches. Those things, today we reverse them. We reverse them. Those things that we are talk, taking over your family, we reverse them. Those things that we are taking over your, your career, we reverse them. We reverse them in the name of Jesus. And we settle the matter on this altar. Give God a clap offering.
took the place of the ones lost in fear. You walked among men just to show how much you care. You are the God, Redeemer of all men. Jesus, you are Lord. Your grace.